set. Okay. There are eight present. Alderperson Donahue and R Rosemary Trester are both excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion before us. Is there any uh, questions, discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is mayor's appointments. Uh, City Attorney. We have one appointment for your consideration, Terry Jacob, to be considered for appointment to the Sheboygan Square Board of Directors to fill the unexpired term of Scott Grinke, whose term expires 12-31-2019. That uh, appointment will lie over till our next meeting. Next item is uh, public forum. There's no one signed up tonight. Very good, then we'll go on to mayor's announcements. freely by citizens and soldiers, and millions who have answered the call to arms have died on the field of battle. And whereas a nation at peace must be reminded of the price of war and the debt owed to those who have died at war, the red poppy has, distinct, has been designated as a symbol of sacrifice of our lives in all wars. And whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has pledged to remind America annually of its debt through the distribution of the memorial flower, I now therefore, Mike Vandersteed, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim the day of May 25th of 2018 as Poppy Day in the City of Sheboygan, and ask that all citizens pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing the memorial poppy on this day. I'd like to present these Ladies, the uh, proclamation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to say some words? Yeah. On behalf of Sheboygan County Council, American Legion Auxiliary, I'm thankful to the mayor for, and the city council for having us here today and honoring our copy, which started with a woman in World War I. It was Moina Bell Michael, and she gave this out for the benefit of veterans. And we are still doing this to this day. So if you see us out and about in the community on the 25th and 26th, that's what we're doing, offering poppies and getting donations for our veterans. Thank you so much. And again, I'd just like to remind the, the residents at home that might see the uh, broadcast of this that uh, City Hall is half moved. We've moved the, all the offices on the first floor of City Hall to the um, former Social Security building on 9th Street right across from City Hall to the west. And next week, all the offices on the upper floors, second and third floor, will be moving to the Sheboygan County uh, Highway offices on North 23rd Street. Um, the City Hall is changing their hours and uh, will be open from 8 o'clock until 4.30 for all offices. There are a few offices like Building Inspection who will be open a little earlier and later, uh, but uh, most of City Hall offices will be closing at 4.30. Thank you. Next item is a presentation uh, on CIVMIC by Paul and Allen. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll uh, try to get through this efficiently so you can get back out and enjoy the weather. Um, 
So my name again is Palin Allen and I'm the manager of member services and risk management at CIVMIC. And earlier this year I was at a conference and I got to talking to Daryl a little bit about um, the fact that we were getting out in front of some of our councils in the membership and explaining a little bit about the story that we have. I think we got a fantastic story and, and we'd like to share it. It really is both of our story uh, together. So if you like the presentation tonight, you can thank Daryl. If it's one of the worst presentations you've ever seen, you can thank Daryl. <clears throat> I'll jump right into it here and I'll kind of skip through some of the more basic slides and I think get into the material that you might be interested in. So I'm gonna call it CIVMIC from here on out, but we are Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company. Uh, we have a mission statement and a vision statement, of course, and that drives a lot of what we do and who we are. If you don't mind going to the next slide, there is one thing on here I do want to pay particular attention to. If you look at the main paragraph there in the upper right, it says, CIVMIC is guided by the principle of teamwork and our success is a direct result of the municipalities that are collectively engaged and invested in their membership. And I, and I just want to point out that our board of directors, which comes from our membership, specifically wanted us to put in that last part that says we are collectively engaged uh, and invested in their membership. Uh, again, the story that we have really works because our members are actively involved in what it is we're doing. And to give you a very, very quick backstory, because I think it's important to understand how we got to where we are today. In 1987, the insurance market was crumbling. It was very difficult to find insurance. If you could find it at all, it was extremely expensive. And so in that market, a group of municipalities throughout the state saw an opportunity to create this entity to provide insurance basically back to itself. That was CIVMIC and that's when and where it was formed. Sheboygan was one of the founding members of CIVMIC and so we have a 30 plus year relationship uh, that we're going on here today. Uh, it's been tremendously successful. It's expanded over the years to provide different services. The reason that it's important to point out how we got to come to uh, existence really is that you understand as far as an insurance company, we are in business solely for the purpose of our members. The coverages that we provide, the service that we provide, uh, this is called the stewardship report that I have in front of you because that's how we look at it. We are stewards of your resources and we try to uh, give back in a way that makes sense and benefits our members as a collective. So if you want to go to the next slide, please. A very quick overview, let's do a flyby. We started with that General liability, here it's listed as public entity liability insurance. Really, that's general liability insurance, and that's how we, we began. About 1996, we added workers' compensation, and then about six or seven years ago, we added additional coverage called, called auto physical damage. Those are our three main areas that we provide insurance for. There's a whole bunch of other ones under there. This entire presentation, if you walk away and you go, that was extremely riveting and I want to know more, it's all available on our website, civmic.com. You can go out and see this report and go through in finer detail. But again, for the purposes of kind of streamlining it, we'll skip some of that uh, stuff on the bottom corner there. So if you want to hit the next slide, please. So what do we look like overall? We have 48 members throughout the state and we cover every corner. We're in Superior, on Alaska. Uh, we're down in Racine and Kenosha area and up to Green Bay and then obviously quite a bit in between. If you total up our premiums, we're coming in around 14 million, the biggest of which is eight and a half for the workers' comp, a little bit over four for the liability, and then about one and a half for the auto physical damage. So that's a, a nice broad spectrum of what it is that we do. If you wanna hit the next slide, please. Now this one gets kind of complicated and where you might wanna dive in later. The only point I wanna impress upon you here is when you put all of our resources together, we have between employees and volunteers right around 26,000 people that are involved. So each one individually you know, has its own set of challenges, but they're all municipalities. And so even though they all do things a little bit differently, we share things like police and fire and uh, public works, et cetera, you know, water, wastewater. And so over the years, we've been able to collect a lot of uh, knowledge, not just for ourselves internally, but from you as fellow members. Our members are fantastic about sharing what it is they do. I told Daryl actually in the spirit of, of being very forthright that we basically stole your strategic plan and mixed it up a little and made it something that we could use for ourselves internally. And it just pointed to the fact that we were always out looking into our membership for ideas. Uh, and you'll see going forward how we get a lot of your ideas into action. 
So if I'm the owner of an insurance company, which you are, again, you are one of 48 owners, I guess one of the things I'd like to know is how is it doing? And at a very quick glance, you can see it's been highly successful. And the way you can determine that, in the world of insurance, not to dive too deep, but probably the most important thing really is your loss ratio. So if you bring in a dollar of premium and you give 50 cents back in claims, that gives you a 50% loss ratio. You can see that for our workers' comp, in the last five years combined, we're at about a 46%, which is just fantastic. Uh, on, on the bottom left, 51% for auto physical damage, and then when you come over the liability, it's 35% loss ratio. All of these numbers are outstanding. Um, I spent about 10 years on the private sector side. I've been with Civic now for 15 years. When I was on the private sector side, if I would have went and showed these numbers to anybody in the room, they probably would have thought I was lying to them, that this wasn't possible. Uh, we're very aggressive on the service end. But it's one thing to provide the service. You and the other members are actively involved in receiving the training, uh, asking from us what it is that you feel will help you uh, do better, uh, be safer, um, you know, treat your employees in a way that keeps them protected. And it really is this interaction that goes on. I can't stress that enough. But if, you, if I ever get caught up here talking like CIVMIC is wonderful and you're along for the ride, I apologize right now, that is not it. I have a story to tell because of you and our other members participating in such an aggressive way that we've been able to have an amazing story together. So the next slide. So a training summary. To bring it down to your level, and I did bring a, a handout here, so for the older people, um, I guess if you could be sure to have one. For everyone else, I, I apologize, I guess you can look over a shoulder. I probably should have kept one of those, but I'll go from memory here as best as possible. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so while that's going around, I'll talk about overall what our numbers look like. Um, I mentioned that we provide training back uh, to our members. That comes in a variety of forms. We will come on site, which is the largest section in there in the orange, uh, and we'll train to our members in their backyards, in their environments, uh, on a variety of topics. Uh, we do regional programs where you can come and be our guest. Uh, we have office, our main office, or well, actually our only office is in Wauwatosa, but we do our regional programs in areas throughout the state. We hit the Fox Valley, we hit the Madison area, sometimes we get up near Wausau. Um, so that's about 10% of our overall training. But we realized maybe six years ago, five, six years ago, that because of our members, their demographics, we needed to come up with another alternative as well. Uh, many our members have people working 24-7 and on weekends. Uh, we have distance challenges. And so just to have training either on site or in our backyard probably wasn't going to cover you like it needed to. So we added webinars and online courses. And all of these services, everything that I talk about today, these are all free just for being a member with CIVMIC. And so that kind of makes up the overall training. Last year we trained over 18,000 people came through a program in one way or another. Did 709 total, about 38,000 hours. But let's take a look at Sheboygan because, again, I think this is probably the most important part is what does it mean to us? So last year, uh, CIVMIC conducted 13 member contacts uh, with Sheboygan. You can see the variety of training that was done there. Um, we're not going to get into too much detail, but our training is really focused in two main areas. It's going to be your HR, what we call EPL, Employment Practices Liability. Uh, so that's all of your supervisory skills, it's your soft skills, it's your conflict resolution. Um, sometimes it's just why can't people get along training, but that's one big part of what we do because we feel if our members are interacting with each other in an appropriate way, that trickles down into the other areas of their business. Uh, it trickles down into less claims, better morale, and just all in all a more participative member. So then the other side of our training that we do is safety related. And we'll do everything from your basic, what I would call regulatory training, a bloodborne pathogen or, or a lockout takeout HASCOM, but also we get into the, the very technical trainings. We'll do hands-on excavation training, confined space, hands-on chainsaw training, bucket trucks, just to name a few. Now, all of those ideas and trainings came out of the fact that our members participated through focus groups and inter interactive opportunities to say, here's what we really need. If you could provide this, it would be wonderful. And so we have worked hard to, again, hit you in places that you're going to find to be valuable and effective. Um, the member training summary, uh, item three there on that list. So I think this is one of the, the, um, the best parts of the program because this shows 
how engaged Sheboygan is as a member. Uh, they attended 27 regional programs, so they traveled to our location last year alone, had 72 people and close to 850, almost 900 hours of training, where you sought it out. You know, as a municipality, you said, we have a need for this, and you came to us for training. That is a fantastic number, just speaking in comparison to uh, other members throughout the state. On site, we were here to do nine programs, had about 165 people go through that, and another 280 or so hours. <clears throat> And then the dist distance learning utilization. And this kind of ebbs and flows. It tends to be one where once people discover it, it really explodes. And so, uh, again, this is a service that we provide. It's accessible. All of our webinars are recorded and made available, again, to our members at no cost. So if you want to advance one slide, please. One of the other unique items in being a CIVMIC member are what we call our Advantage programs. Uh, these are programs that are provided strictly to our members and there are creative ways that we've tried to find to return those resources to you. Again, being stewards of it and the, and the beauty of this is because we're a mutual, when we take in too much, we get to give it back. We don't answer to um, a, a profit share organization. You know, we, don't, we have a board of directors but their interests are of course that we keep this thing moving and solvent and steady. So last year alone, I mentioned we brought in about 14 million, just in dividends alone, and not to insult anybody's intelligence, you may know this already, if you do not, a dividend is simply money that we return at the end of the year. So again, we take it in, once you get through the insurance season, we, needed, we had more than we needed, and we gave it back. So we returned just right off the top, three million of that $14 million that we took in. I can almost tell people and friends at parties that I work for an insurance company when I can say something like that. It takes away a little bit of the bad name. Then there's a grant program that we have, and a grant program sounds like a very complicated thing. It's extremely simple. Again, this is your money. We're not going to make you work too hard for it, but are there things that you need, training, equipment, supplies, materials that you maybe couldn't get otherwise? We set aside a chunk of money that we give back to the members. And so last year alone, just through the grant program, our 48 members received $300-plus back through the grant program. <clears throat> Cyber liability insurance. You don't have to look too far these days to see the, challenge that, the challenges that face us in the world of cyber liability. Um, obviously, it's quite a risk. So what we normally do in an area like this is we do what's called group purchase. We use our buying power, we get the coverage, and then we allow our members to go ahead and choose whether or not they want it. In this particular case, we said, you know, cyber liability really impacts everyone. They don't get a choice. Everyone is getting cyber liability insurance whether they want it or not. So it's a very strong coverage with data breach coaches, um, just a, just a top-notch notch coverage that, again, we're able to use our buying power and go out and get for the entire membership. So then to look at how some of the other creative uh, items are that we've been able to do, the NeoGov products down into the middle, these are HR tools and resources that our members uh, were buying on their own. And when we started to realize that they were spending pretty good money individually, we thought maybe we could come in and get a group discount. So we coordinated the purchase of all these HR tools for our membership because oftentimes our members are really <clears throat> struggling in this area. Um, we, have a, we have small, medium, and large members. Our smaller members really don't have HR departments for the most part, and they utilize these types of tools to get something done that they probably would not be able to do otherwise. So for us to go out and buy it and give it to them as a free service has really been effective. Out of our 48 members, we have 44 of them that are using all these products. So that's been fantastic. I won't get uh, into too much detail here, but these are just other ways. We have a battery shutoff program, and on the back of your sheet in item five, you can see what your utilization of these have been. You've maxed out the grant program. I believe you've done that every year. Uh, you've utilized the battery shutoff switch program. I can explain that in further detail if, if you want. Just probably give me a call. I won't do it here now. But it was a market problem where vehicles were starting on fire. This was our aftermarket solution. We purchased it and gave it to the members to prevent fires. The IT assessments, you have done that. You've taken advantage of it. Very discounted rate that we pay half of so that that whole cyber liability insurance that we provide, we wanted to make sure we were providing or whether we were actually insuring decent risks. So we uh, came up with a way to do IT assessments and, uh, and get a better handle on our exposure. We have Wiley Egg, we had a Narcan program. Uh, if any of these are generating questions, please, you know, feel free. But uh, otherwise, I'm just going to keep on getting through the material here. All right, so not seeing any questions, we'll go ahead and get to the next slide. 
I mentioned our partnership in action. It is truly a partnership. Um, I was very thankful uh, to Daryl, uh, Mayor of the Council, that you were willing to let me come out this evening and just share a few words because one of the things that we are experiencing, our success story has again been fantastic, but some of that is getting a little bit lost over time. People maybe not recognizing or understanding why this has been such a great relationship back and forth. And so it just felt like a time to get out this year and tell the stories. I've had an opportunity to do this for a few other councils, and I appreciate uh, that you're letting me spend a few minutes of your time. So that's one way that we plug into our membership. You can see all the different groups that we get involved in there. And if you want to go ahead and hit the next slide. That dizzying array of services speaks a little bit uh, to what we do. It's more than just training. Uh, we get into inspections and we do loss trend analysis or policy development audits, the whole gamut. I think the only thing that I want to draw attention to on this particular slide is just the fact that you have a dedicated claims representative, you have a dedicated loss control person, and a dedicated EPL, that HR person. So we give people to you directly. That seems to help the relationship, uh, make sure everybody understands and gets to know each other better, and it's been a very good model for us. All right. Thank you. So you are on there. I see you up on the top there, the original members. You might notice your logo. I think the thing that's worth noticing here, because again, if I'm yourselves and I own part of this organization, I'd like to know a little bit about how does your business model work. We are a slow growth business model. We are not running around the state shouting from the rooftops that we're open for business. We try to be very selective. It's not that we won't add new members. We certainly will, but there's a fairly thorough process that takes place. We owe it to you as, a, as existing members to bring in good new members, and uh, it protects your interests as they are now. And the other thing, realistically, if somebody comes in and they are not terribly interested in training and service and doing the right thing, I'm not sure this is going to be a good fit, and everyone will probably be frustrated. And so we work pretty hard to bring the right people in to continue being a part of our operation. I think that's pretty close to the end. There's your uh, board of directors. Um, I don't know what to say. You know, I, I always feel like I owe you a comment about whether they're handsome or <laughs> something like that. That's your board of directors. They are a very solid group. They have come from two, two of these members come from our large uh, members. Then there's another two that come from the medium members and two come from small and there, there's an at large that kind of can come from any one of those. Uh, but they've been extremely effective, you know, a nice collection of skills and talents. Uh, reasonable yet watchful and I think it's a board you could be proud of. I think that might be the last slide. So that was a very very quick synopsis of who CIVMIC is and hopefully gave you a better understanding of, of why you would want to know a little bit more about our partnership. If you have any additional questions I'm gonna say that you can go ahead and ask Daryl. Hopefully that's okay if you don't mind. And uh, you know, I'll be happy to get you any answers or clarification on anything that you saw here tonight or going forward. Thank you very much for that presentation, Mr. Allen. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have a second presentation tonight. Our first quarter strategic plan action items and critical measures by our city administrator, Daryl Hoffman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vanderstein. Uh, in, on your desk, uh, is a copy of our first quarter 2018, uh, so January 1st, 2018 to March 31st, 2018. So most of my comments are going to be focused on that time period. Uh, from time to time, I'll probably identify if some additional information subsequent to that March 31st date has occurred, uh, I, I may, may highlight those. Because it is the first quarter, um, in many cases on the action items, we have not accomplished certain proje projects. Uh, again, if you recall, uh, if you're a uh, trustee who's, or alder who's been around uh, for more than one year, uh, but for the newer uh, al alders that were elected in April, uh, again, this is all tied to our strategic plan. In our strategic plan, the original strategic plan, we had 2017, 2018 action items and then we had specific critical measures or measurements. So in essence, I'm giving you an update what progress we've made to that strategic plan. Uh, I created a couple slides to help uh, us uh, go through and highlight uh, some of the 
more notable uh, items that have occurred so far, again, in the first quarter of 2018. Meredith, if you want to... Again, this uh, light blue is a little hard to read. I'll choose a different color next time. Um, uh, because it is light, let me just talk a little bit about some of the items. Again, it says that some projects are unable to be completed within an annual time frame. As a result, several have been moved uh, up from a 2017 to 2018, or in fact, some of the 2018 may be postponed to 2019. We do work collaboratively collaboratively with internal and external partners uh, to, for support and improve relations. Staff leverages all intergovernmental resources and other contributions to maximize savings and input, improve input. Uh, staff utilizes public feedback for improvement and modification and comparative bar, uh, benchmarking with other municipalities is used to ensure our efforts are fiscally responsive, responsible. Again, uh, really light uh, for those uh, maybe toward the back. A couple things I want to mention is, I'll, uh, again, I'll be referring uh, on your spreadsheet to the first column. It has a number on the first page. It's 1 through 17. You follow? Uh, okay. So on line, line 9, uh, EMS uh, response of 36 seconds or less. The goal is 90% uh, of the time that we are to respond within that 360 seconds for EMS. Uh, this first quarter, uh, we're at 54%. And one of the reasons, uh, Vern Koch is here from the fire department, one of the reasons is that now with the uh, uh, emergency medical, um, what's the D stand for? Dispatch, uh, EMD, uh, the clock doesn't start for them until they've gone through their list. Uh, so as a result, our, our times are, are much longer. Uh, so that's something that uh, we'll have to either adjust the measurement or uh, or talk with the county as far as when the clock starts because they no doubt they have a way to uh, provide a certain time or uh, within a call and we may need to either work with them when they start start their their stopwatch so to speak uh, or whether or whether we're going to change uh, the 360 seconds. Uh, measurement. So that's something uh, we hope to give an update to you. Most likely will be at a public uh, safety committee. Uh, part one and part two crime rates, uh, line uh, 13 and 14. Uh, the good news uh, is that uh, the benchmark that we've established, we're right in line with that for violent crimes. For property crimes, we're, we're far below uh, the benchmark. And again, um, 25% of the year has passed, so that's what we're using in essence uh, as to where we're at for, for this reporting period. So we're only at 15% for property crimes. Uh, line 18 uh, is on the next page, is walkability score. Uh, this identifies that we haven't uh, identified a score uh, through the first quarter in checking uh, as late as yesterday. Uh, that score is... 86 uh, from our downtown. Uh, actually, I think I have it noted on, on our spreadsheet. Uh, so we're uh, at, uh, we're at our, our expectations of, of 86. Uh, line 20 is trips per revenue uh, vehicle mile. It's 15.41. It exceeds our goal of 13. Again, this, uh, goes, this is specifically for Shoreline Metro Again, the number of passengers uh, on, our, on our trips. For Metro Connections, uh, we're right on the mark. We're at 100%. For line 28, uh, prescription drugs, uh, the major collection initiative uh, occurs after March 31st. So uh, when Chief Domagowski filled this in, uh, at that point we didn't uh, have uh, an amount. Uh, I talked with him. Uh, over the weekend, and he identified 474 pounds, or 40% of our annual benchmark or goal has, in fact, been received. Next, infrastructure and public uh, facilities. Uh, line 46, uh, stormwater management plan. Uh, in fact, on your agenda tonight, there's a recommendation uh, to 
to have Public Works Committee review uh, hiring strand associates. Uh, for pavement ratings, uh, again, this typically is done every two years. Uh, so on line 49, uh, the goal is uh, to be at 6.5. You can see in the notes all the way to the right under the status column. Uh, in 2015, we were at 5.93. Um, 6.25 is where we expect we're going to be. Uh, the benchmark is 6.5, so we're, we're getting close. So we're at 96% of achieving uh, the 6.5 goal. Uh, next slide. Economic development is our third uh, focus area. Uh, line 52, uh, assemble redevelopment sites in key areas, uh, specifically the Innovation District. 100% of the properties were acquired over the last uh, year and a half, capsule property being one larger track, <coughs> and then uh, many properties, as you recall, along Indiana Avenue. Line 64 is uh, square feet of industrial property. Uh, we've identified zero as far as commenced in 2018. A couple projects uh, that have been, a, uh, one project that's been approved and we're waiting for construction is FedEx. I'm talking with Chad, uh, we just received notice that a state uh, set of plans have been approved, so we hope they'll be coming in for their local approval. Uh, we're also working with a Northside uh, development team uh, that hopes to uh, put on 184,000 square foot addition. So that's something to uh, watch for uh, on a future plan commission agenda. Line 54 is uh, coordinate with consultant for a new business park project. Uh, as as uh, we talked about, I think, during the groundbreaking ceremony, uh, or ribbon or groundbreaking ceremony for the phase one business park, this is a project that, again, with a lot of coordinated effort, multiple departments, uh, hiring good, good consultants. Uh, we did a feasibility re study last year. We did a TID study last year, project plan. Uh, land acquisition occurred, negotiated, but closed, uh, I think, first week of this year. Uh, and, of course, we completed the design all within roughly a, probably a seven-month period of time. And as you know, we've recently awarded contracts in phase one. Uh, construction has, has started. Uh, next slide, uh, neighborhood revitalization. On line 75, uh, this is a project I'm, I'm just really proud of. Uh, Chad heads up this meeting. Uh, it's monthly interdepartmental staff meetings to coordinate neighborhood issues. Uh, every month succinctly, January, February, March, uh, and no doubt subsequent to that we've held meetings, is to gather, because it's going to take a multiple departments to uh, work on a solution, please fire city development, the mayor's office, my office, public works. We invite Habitat for Humanity, uh, Lakeshore Landlord Association, uh, we all get together, brainstorm, we update each other, we identify areas of concern, uh, we target specific neighborhoods a, as far as next year's goals. Uh, this is something that is, is very dynamic and so far I think very successful. A number of new neighborhood associations, uh, zero to date, but I know in talking with Chad, uh, two new associations are in process or under, uh, under consideration. Uh, line 81. Um, uh, continuing, uh, continue fund funding for two neighborhood beat officers, again, a very worthwhile program. Um, we hope that uh, you will continue to fund that in future budget years. Uh, line 86, uh, which is a uh, number of abandoned vehicles towed or already in our first quarter this year at 59%. Uh, last year, the, old, the total amount uh, towed uh, was 83 vehicles. So good, good news, bad news, uh, there's a lot of vehicles that uh, we're, we're towing. So hopefully that means we're cleaning up some of these neighborhoods. Uh, no doubt we would love for our residents to take care of these themselves, but uh, if, if called upon, we will take care of it for the betterment of, of neighborhoods. Line 87, uh, which is number of gar garbage complaints investigated slash cited, uh, we're at 88% already in the first quarter of 2018. So 264 and our benchmark uh, was set at 300. Um, again, sort of good news, bad news. In two, calendar year 2017, uh, we had 820 related complaints. So again, this is part of our plan of attack in uh, working with some of these neighborhoods that are very fragile. 
uh, and hoping to provide a, a better environment for those uh, that live in those areas or adjacent. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the fifth of six uh, uh, focus areas is governing and fiscal management. Uh, first one is on line 100. Uh, this is about Munis, which is our, our sort of master uh, software um, programs, uh, a module that uh, we're going to be implementing in 2018 for the benefit of 2019, and that's associated with our budget. So staff, as they begin developing uh, their budget requests, uh, in the past we've used Excel. Uh, now we're going to be translating or transferring uh, to this new module associated with our MUNIS system. <coughs> Some uh, clearly it's additional work for our management team and their support staff, but once they get it underway, it should be helpful and be more efficient for them uh, in future budget years. Line uh, 88 uh, is uh, continuing providing detailed city, uh, city budget documents to citizens. As you're aware, uh, we create a budget brief uh, we put our, our budget on, our draft budget on the, our website, and ultimately when it's approved, uh, we put it in flip book format to make it easier for citizens to, to use it uh, as, as a tool uh, as they have an in, in interest or a uh, possible question. Line 92, a submit budget for GFOA, a war consideration that did occur. We should learn sometime in July if, we're, uh, if um, uh, an award is merited. Line 94 uh, is a newsletter, employee newsletter. They're done quarterly. Uh, line 97 is a conduct a transit <coughs> transportation development program for the next five years of operations of Shoreline Metro. Uh, Derek Mink uh, is working with Bay Lakes a Regional Planning Commission on the development of a, tr a transit plan. Uh, last slide I have is uh, communication, our last focus area. Uh, line 103 is create a monthly electronic community newsletter. Again, January, February, March, so 25% uh, uh, of our goal uh, has, has been completed. Uh, continue citizen survey on an annual basis. Uh, uh, we moved uh, from what had been in the past a June or July survey period to February, March in 2018. Uh, we did that to make sure that you had information as we went into the updates for our strategic plans action items and, and uh, critical measurements. Uh, and, and based upon staff's workload, we think we'll probably stay with that February, March uh, survey timeframe. The next three are social media related. Uh, Twitter, Nextdoor, Facebook, we're seeing a significant increase in the amount of our followers, whether it be users or likes, whatever their ter terminology is. Number of televised common council and community of the whole meetings, uh, we're at 34 uh, percent, so I think 10 meetings uh, again January through March. And last but not least, uh, as sort of a new use of social media, uh, Instagram is being used now by the library, and they're almost at 200 percent of what they're re uh, where they were, which was again as a new a new form of media medium. Uh, they started with zero, and now they're at uh, I think 189. Uh, that concludes my remarks. Any questions? Uh, again, I'll be giving you an update in roughly three months. Uh, many of these measurements, plus others, uh, the department heads will be presenting to you at your respective committee commissions and boards. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to maybe have a little more of uh, two-way discussion, so I would encourage that if you have questions. Um, as you know, uh, as part of the retreat process, uh, some uh, additional uh, critical measures or measurements were identified, and so uh, staff is already uh, gearing up uh, for 2019 to, again, better match uh, the critical measures that we keep track, in essence, our analytics, to what we think are critical uh, reports of activity uh, so you can have a better sense as to workload and ultimately our accomplishments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that report. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.3 through 2.26. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight ties. Motion passes. Next item is reports of officers. Um, items 3.1 through 3.5 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 4.1 is resolution number 29 of 1819 by Alderperson Reinfleisch Rein uh, and Born, approving the fiscal year 2018 one year annual action plan for the community development block grant program submission. All the person, Rinfleisch. I move that we suspend the rules and pass the resolution. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Very good. Then the, the motion is on the floor for discussion. Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a quick question. Um, I know that this is the, the HUD Community Development Grant. Is that correct, Jen? <coughs> I'm just curious why we're suspended for this one. I know that this is kind of a, a, a larger a grant that we get from the federal government. And I, I believe last session we suspended as well to pass this. Um, if I was correct, I'm just curious why something like this um, is not going and being discussed through the Finance Committee. Thank you for that question. I'll ask City Planner Chad Pelichek to respond. This is, it's actually, there's an RC that came out of finance and these items were supposed to be included in that RC and they were not. This uh, has been approved by the Finance Committee at their last meeting. Um, but this resolution is just kind of encompassing all the items together into one document so we can submit it to HUD. But it has been approved by the Finance Committee. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight ayes. Motion passes. Next move on to reports of committees. Item 5.1 is RC number 33 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred RO number 10 of 1819 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting a request to accept $20,000 in sponsorship contribution towards the 2018 City's Freedom Fest celebration from the Valrath Company and recommends filing a document. Um, Alder Person Rinfleisch. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alder Person Rinfleisch. I'd like to thank the Valworth Company for stepping forward with a generous donation to help us with the 4th of July celebration. Thank you for those comments. Well deserved. Seeing no other uh, discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to item 5.2, it's RC number 34 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred uh, direct referral resolution number 4 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing and executing a sewer project memorandum of understanding for a project involving improvements to a portion of a sewer line located on South Business Drive to accommodate development within the South Point Enterprise Campus and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. It should be it should be to accept and adopt and pass the amended resolution. Sorry. <laughs> accept and adopt and pass amended resolution. Second. Okay, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? I should probably explain the changes. Alderperson Born. What I was going to ask uh, Attorney Adams to go over the updated document as I haven't had a chance to review that one. I did read the original. 
Attorney Adams? Yes. So um, th this has been an ongoing project in negotiation with uh, the town and the town sanitary district. Uh, there are three changes uh, to the document that was in board docs uh, to the document that you now have uh, on paper in front of you. Uh, first, uh, there was some um, back and forth just in the recitals, uh, and we've agreed uh, in um, Section C uh, simply to indicate that the uh, MOU is intended to provide the terms and conditions of the district's agreement to the property, and that's, uh, and that's fine. Uh, that's pr pretty close to what we were looking for. Uh, there is an additional uh, paragraph, the new paragraph one that was not in the uh, prior document, uh, simply an indication that the parties have authority to enter into the MOU under a uh, particular Wisconsin statute. Um, there's been some back and forth about that because this really is a memorandum of understanding. It is not a contract. Uh, a contract is one thing. A memorandum of understanding is designed to sort of explain a contract and explain how the parties understand it. Um, but I don't have any particular objection to that additional um, document, even though in in some ways it refers to the wrong statute. There is also what is now uh, paragraph three uh, was a new uh, paragraph, and that's probably where the potential rub is. Um, paragraph three uh, does provide for uh, the city and for the town uh, to enter into negotiations uh, to update an addendum to the master agreement that we currently have uh, to the 1975 Joint Sewage Agreement. So just as background, uh, the 1975 Joint Sewage Agreement is an agreement that the city has with a number of entities uh, in the area, uh, including the town of Wilson, um, for basically a sewage district, and, and that sewage comes into the city. Uh, the city uh, treats uh, that sewage. The city and the town of Wilson later, uh, I think around 1986 or somewhere around there, uh, entered into uh, a, an addendum uh, to that agreement just between the city and the town related to the fact that in that area, you've got areas that are in the town, the city, it's a ch very checkerboard pattern. And so relating how do we deal with uh, the sewage uh, in, in that area. Um, the town, uh, as part of this, has, has really insisted um, that the city enter into additional uh, negotiations. Uh, our position had been that those are really separate issues uh, from what we're trying to do here, uh, but we couldn't get them uh, you know, to, to do that, and, and potentially they were holding up uh, the, um, the project that we've got uh, going down there. Uh, this language, uh, in essence, uh, it softens up some of what we had really objected to before they had laid out very specific language that they were saying that we would agree that this language would be in the document. Um, I don't feel that we can uh, uh, commit you uh, to that, especially when we're just you know, trying to get this passed through rather quickly. But this does commit us then to by no later than June 1, 2019, or at least uh, as, as uh, close to that date as possible, uh, to look at some uh, potential changes, updating capacity, allocation plans to reflect what the actual uh, and anticipated flows are in the area, updating cost allocations, uh, creating some triggers that require actions by the parties, and establishing a mechanism for inter intergovernmental cooperation uh, for sewer planning. Uh, because these, uh, because the, the town's uh, current language, which they provided um, about three hours ago, um, does not bind you into very specific uh, uh, agreements, uh, my feeling is that um, while this is not the language I would write, um, and if there weren't other things going on, I would perhaps not recommend this, uh, given the cost-benefit analysis of uh, basically objecting uh, to this and, and putting off uh, the agreement, um, it, it's probably uh, worthwhile to agree to these changes. And so I think uh, staff is making the recommendation that uh, you do enter into it. Okay, uh, next I'd like to call on Administrator Hofflin. As uh, City Attorney identified, uh, I, I'm in support uh, of the amended changes uh, that were given to you this evening. Uh, as Chuck alluded to, um, 
This is something that uh, we've been in discussions with the town of Wilson for, for several months. Um, this, this is uh, critical to uh, our phase one construction of the 150 acres of, of the South Point uh, Enterprise Campus. Uh, potentially without a mem memorandum of understanding, again, the DNR would not issue us a permit uh, to allow us to proceed with the installation of the sanitary sewer associated with this phase one. And then potentially, since we've awarded contracts, there is the potential for a delay of construction penalty that the city could start incurring if we're not able to allow the contractor, uh, based upon their timetable, to, to proceed with the project. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson uh, Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What is the, uh, the number on that uh, delayed construction um, the penalty? Uh, we have not incurred any as of, as of yet, uh, but the concern is that, uh, you know, it's, it's the contractor has set aside uh, time to perform uh, in this business park, and as a result, if they have to pull off or, or have this window where they're not, in essence, making uh, a profit, then the city potentially has uh, some penalties uh, that we would incur. Second thing I didn't mention is that, you know, without this memorandum of understanding, uh, the city possibly would resort to uh, uh, seeking a remedy uh, legally, and no doubt that would be additional costs the city could incur. I'd also like to ask uh, Department of Public Works Director to respond to that. Yeah, the, the, the potential could be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in delay. It's, it could, because, it, you know, the total contract's around $10.5 million of, and the sanitary sewer is you know, a portion of that, at least I'm thinking you know, a couple million dollars just in sanitary sewer cost alone. Um, this section for the pipe bursting and that is almost a million dollars in and of itself that would could be uh, severely delayed. So that's, again, when we talk about cost benefit of, expediting this contract versus taking a longer, uh, I guess, legal and fight, in other words, to try to remedy this. This is probably the best alternative. Many of the issues that, um, that would be discussed as part of that addendum that they're talking about um, clearly are gonna be triggered a lot by future city development. So the city has probably the burden of the majority of those future costs anyway just a matter we do have some other agreements with other townships such as the town of Sheboygan for instance that um, talks about cost share of future developments as well as uh, flows within adjoining pipes or joint 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 sewer pipes in other words so who pays for what based on volume in other words so there's already mechanisms that we can relate to so um, although it's not the best um, but in terms of where we're headed in terms of timing um, this is probably the most prudent thing at this point. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? All the person boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Director Beeble, is it kind of guesswork out there of what's coming because it's such a checkerboard of residences out there? Uh, is it kind of a guesstimate of, uh, of, of the city flows or the, uh, the town flows? And my other question is, uh, when is the last time we've uh, updated our, our uh, charges to those various uh, townships, et cetera, that are, that are using our uh, wastewater treatment plant? Go ahead. Uh, we, we update the charges every year. That's part of the rates that we calculate based on our budget. So those get updated every year. We're, we're, we are looking, though, however, at especially now with the, this business center expansion, as well as other lands uh, for future development, either residential development in the future based on land use, future flows. So we're, we're actively, the town has done some of those calculations. We have done some. Now we need to get together and based on what development occurs on vacant land, either industrial, commercial, or residential, it depends on that type of development on, on the future flows. And that will be, that's what will probably be, be the biggest source of this addendum will be how do we calculate it how do we come to a mutual understanding of what those future calculations will be as far as what the flow is what this out in that area what the flow is from the city and what the flow is from the from the town correct and, and 
it, what, would, what, what really needs to happen is the current infra infrastructure that serves this area is undersized for future development. Let's say 25, 50 years in the future, once this land, which is is the seat, is, and you know, basically experiencing more and more pressure to be developed along this corridor, the the existing infrastructure will be inadequate for future. So what we need to do is design accordingly, and then build that infrastructure. Once we build it, it will be who pays for it, and it's basically based on volume and flows, who is sending the amount of volume and then they, there's cost sharing agreements that we can can work through with these agreements thanks any other discussion city attorney uh, is it expected that the town board will be voting on this same measure this evening uh, what I've been told is that they have already provided authorization for this uh, document as it is it's actually not the town board but it's the um, the sewage district okay all right, with that, uh, any other discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 35 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Too much referred resolution number 12 of 1819 by uh, the resolution. Uh, by Alder Person Ryan Fleisch, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget and recommends the resolution. Uh, Alder Person Ryan Fleisch. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Next item is item 5.4, that's uh, RC number 36 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 13 of 1819 by all the persons Donahue and Sorensen providing for the sale of approximately 25,000, excuse me, 25,465,000 in general obligation promissory notes and note anticipation notes and recommends passing the resolution. All the person Rinfleisch. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alder Person Rinfleisch. Finance Committee had a long presentation, <coughs> long and detailed presentation by our bond council uh, on this, and uh, looks like a good program to go forward with. And I'll get all the details at, at the committee level. Thank you very much for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 .5 is RC number 37 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee. Tumors referred resolution number 17 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen approving the terms and conditions of the land lease for the Boots and Sports Complex between the City of Sheboygan and Lakeshore United FC for a soccer facility to be located on the west of South Business Drive between Hiawatha Court and Barron's Parkway and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. This is a great opportunity that's going to uh, be a legacy for the city of Sheboygan uh, with the growth and development of this facility. Um, it's going to be, as we were told, you know, probably the, the diamond that will bring people to she not just Sheboygan County but to, to, to the city of Sheboygan. 
with a lot of tourism, a lot of games, uh, young generations, old generations having a lot of fun. So this is going to be a great opportunity um, for, for many lifetimes. Okay, next. Alder person Boring. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I just want to basically second what Alderman Wolf said. This is in my District 10, and this is going to be uh, excellent for the south side of Sheboygan. I've read the document. Uh, I think it's a good document for both parties, and I'm looking forward to this coming to fruition. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? I'm sorry, um, sorry we have to take a roll call on this. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Under uh, general ordinances, 6.1 is general ordinance number four, and that'll be referred. And uh, under other matters, city attorney. 7.1 uh, is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018, April 14, 2019, June 30, 2019, and June 30, 2020. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Next is a um, contemplated motion to go into closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under Section 19.85 Sub 1 Sub E of the Wisconsin Stats for the purpose of deliberating possible tentative agreement with the Sheboygan Professional Police Officers Association. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion's on the floor will the clerk please call the roll <laughs> eight eyes Motion passes. We'll take a two or three minute recess and then reconvene. Thank you very much. And to those uh, watching at home, we will be uh, re, uh, rather adjourning in closed session. So this will end our broadcast for this evening. We, we will be taking action. Oh, I'm sorry. We will be coming back.